Wow, this truck sounds like it is having a baby. <laughs> Push out that baby. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. And this is the, the Paul, Paul and Morgan. Morgan. The Paul the and Morgan Paul Show. Morgan Show. Today's video <laughs> is uh, we want to give our lowdown on the coronavirus. We just thought we'd share how we're doing with it, how we've been affected by it, some perspectives and takeaways we've had thus far into this crazy time but first make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell we make christian videos on life love and dating to help you have hope and be free and guys if you haven't we got our new merch out the paul and morgan show.com we revamped the website we'll link it below highly encourage you to grab some long sleeve short sleeve this one <laughs> which is my personal favorite all right i feel like that was super low energy guys do we have to be filled with a crap ton of energy every time we film a video like if we don't have energy go ahead budweiser truck drive along a budweiser truck would do that to us <laughs> we don't have a ton of energy in this video but yeah it's still yeah we be might a good video but it's still gonna be a good video even though it's starting out a little lower energy i think it's a myth that like we have to have a ton of energy in every video that we film we should just be able to chill out with you guys so that's what we're doing wow this truck sounds like it is having a baby <laughs> so morgan let's give them a lowdown and, and part of the reason we're making this video is because we just we'd love for you guys to share where you're at concerning the coronavirus maybe how it's affected you impacted you and also just like your thoughts because there's so many different thoughts and different perspectives to this not one being necessarily more right than the other and so i think it's good to talk about so a lot of you guys don't know paul and i were working part-time jobs um at some different places he was working somewhere I was working somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> and we lost those jobs obviously like a lot of people did um, and that probably is a surprise to many of you for a, a period of time we were full-time on YouTube just grinding and trying to make it and we realized that at least for this season we need to bring in a little bit more income so we try to get ahead of the ball ahead of the ball because as many of you all know budgeting and money has been something that Morgan and I have really um, been having to work on and grow in and so yeah we just realized we need to be bringing in a little more so god willing youtube will be that for us sooner than later but until it's providing what we need we, yeah we jumped into some side jobs some side hustles side hustles and then we lost them yeah, we lost them <laughs> like i mean so many of you guys lost part-time jobs full-time jobs yeah but fortunately oh, Fortunately, praise God, I like am so grateful that we have YouTube and Patreon and that stuff because if we didn't, uh, wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, President Trump is talking about uh, allocating some money to different places and um, unemployment type stuff. So, I mean, there there is stuff in the works, but yeah. we're very thankful for yeah. the steadiness of youtube now we're just both at home full time able to make more videos able to make more videos which is why you're getting several videos a week now hope you guys are enjoying it hope are you kidding me we yeah, apparently yeah, parked literally. right in the crux <laughs> core crux of okay. all noise in kentucky this is probably the loudest spot in kentucky i thought people were supposed to be at home not doing anything and as you can see, we're out and about. We do hop into our car and film, as you guys have seen, uh, switch things up some, and that's been nice for us. But yeah, like, it has been challenging. Morgan and I both like to be out and about, and that's been challenging. Yeah, you know, even though we were both pretty used to being at home a lot, doing work, doing just, YouTube stuff. Yeah, um, the fact that now it's like, oh no, you actually like cannot go anywhere like that is very hard and you know other things like working out and going to church and going to see friends and family has been kind of canceled um so that is just weird and that's hard like yeah. morgan and i live with michael and part of the main reason i guess would be even though michael's an awesome friend the main reason is to save money um but uh it's, it's been a blessing that we're not living alone you know or yeah. you know living 
just as a single person living alone like that would be our hearts go out to you guys and yeah. hopefully you guys are just staying strong and the Lord's giving you strength but we're blessed that we you know have three people to a home yeah yeah I mean for those of you guys who are on your own stuck in a apartment or even a house just you alone like I'm praying for you like we have <sighs> I don't know how you're doing it but it's the Lord's strength if you are. Our life is different just like your all's lives are different. It's not been easy. As you guys know, I shared in my video um, just the struggle of depression coming back up. And so, yeah, I'm just encouraging you guys and myself. We have to be patient with ourselves. Um, we have to be honest with ourselves and with the people around us um, so that they know like, hey, I'm really struggling and I need you to give me more patience. I need you to give me more grace like during this time and just work with me. Um, so that was something that I really encouraged you guys to do in my last video of just please, please share it with someone. Don't take this burden on. If you're all alone in an apartment, like Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, whatever you need to do to, yeah. to talk to people. And be vulnerable um, and yeah. just say like, hey, I could really use someone to talk to or I'm, I'm struggling here. Do you mind if we start talking more on a regular basis to a friend or whoever may not be aware? Yeah. And if you are a friend, just checking in. Like, even for me, like, I live with Morgan, so, like, I'm around her a lot. It should be, you know, you'd think that I wouldn't have to, like, be very intentional, but I have to be. Being like, Morgan, how are you doing? Like, how's your day going? And yeah. I'm not perfect in that area, but I've been trying to be more intentional. He does a good job. You guys might be a lot like me where I won't really tell people how I'm doing unless they ask me. I don't know, like... I, I think part of it is like, oh, I just don't want to burden someone. And also like, well, they didn't ask, so do they really care? And like, I don't know, there's a lot of things that go on in my mind about that. So like with Paul and I in our marriage, we've just had to learn like he has to ask me questions if he wants to really know what I think about something. Yeah, go or, deeper if I want to go deeper. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some things that I'm very vocal about and we'll share my opinion. I think Paul and I would both encourage you guys to, to take part in being a just good sister or brother in Christ and reach out to those people you know who have struggled in the past maybe they haven't struggled for years but this is a really strange time like do your job and just checking in so Morgan just tell us a few key things considering that maybe some of your structure was taken away some things that you were used to doing were taken away what are a few key things that you're like I'm gonna make sure I do this every day or every other day that maybe other people could potentially implement Taking a bike ride or a walk or both. Okay, getting outside, doing something active. Taking a bike ride or going on a walk or both. Okay, so getting outside, <laughs> doing something active. Working out three times throughout the week, whatever the workout looks like, it's gonna probably look different every single time because I'm just changing things up. Um, I'm really enjoying cooking more food, coming up with different recipes, just trying new things because yeah. we got the time. And guys, like you can still, a lot of you, I know some isolation is more severe, but you can still go out to Kroger and Morgan and I, because we're eating at home more, are, like Morgan said, branching out a little bit, maybe getting some foods that we wouldn't normally and spicing up the meals a little bit. Steak. Try it, you know, <laughs> like use this opportunity to have some fun in other areas that maybe you didn't before painting once a week you are. playing piano playing more piano writing more music yeah things like that that's good that's good i mean just simple stuff and i'm sure as you're here and morgan talk you're like oh i could start doing that again or practice that more what? <laughs> put your hand in my face more please did i put my hand in your face <laughs> let us know in the comment section maybe give some ideas to other people what are certain things that you guys have been doing more of during this time paul and i were challenged yesterday um one of our the guys pastors who speaks at our churches he went live on facebook for our church and one of the things that he really challenged um us to do was to not use this time to just like sit around and allow old things that you've moved past, mm -hmm. old temptations, old ways of living, whatever it might be, whether good or bad, like things that you've moved on from, don't let them seep back into your life and take back over. Like 
don't let all the hard work yeah, yeah. that you've done with the Lord fail. <laughs> yeah, so whether it's like just blatant sin that you had kind of been like moved on from and now you're slipping back into it or maybe just habits that you know like this isn't profitable for me. Yeah. Because um, I noticed, yeah, I noticed that it was suddenly I was like having more time and I used to fill it doing these things and I don't have those things anymore. So I'll slip back into maybe watching some stuff that's just kind of cruddy for my spirit. It's not like blatantly bad but it's just not good you know it's interesting because i think we've all obviously been affected by this pandemic one way or another whether it's someone we know catching the virus or uh, you know obviously being isolated or thinking you have the virus and going into self-isolation like we've all been affected by it and it's just crazy but like so many people immediately run to fear and not believing that like God is fully in control. I know it's a really, really, really touchy subject. So of course I want to be careful with what I say, but also I'm just, yes, take this seriously, but don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Don't let the enemy win. Guys, you can be cautious, you can be wise, but you know, the Bible says like, the Lord is near, do not be anxious about anything, do not live in fear. The righteous are as bold as lions, and this is such a great opportunity for Christians, yes, like respond in love, be wise, treat this with care, but if we're resorting to, to fear and crippling anxiety, you know, this is an opportunity to be a city on a hill, lights for a world that doesn't know Christ and so easily can tip into panic. We don't have to do that. We're called not to. Maybe you've heard this before and maybe you have not, but there are 365 times in the Bible that say, do not be afraid or mention not being fearful. That covers every single day of your life. To not be afraid, to not live in fear. The Lord is covering you in protection and strength and and courage every single day of your life. Now you have to live in it. Now you have to do your part, like I mentioned in my last video. You have to do your part and say, I believe what the Lord says. I'm going to not be afraid. It makes me think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were about to get thrown into the furnace, they said to the king, like, you know, ultimately, we're not afraid. We know that our God can rescue us from the fiery furnace, but even if he doesn't, he's still good we still trust him in that respect like even if this his virus were to take us like god is still in control you know be wise be cautious but don't live in fear so this leads us to is god dropping his judgment on us right now Woo! see that is this god's wrath upon the people who have turned their hearts it's interesting to me how you have the camp that is so confident that yes like you know we have so many, so much of the world, so much of America has given themselves over to sin and depravity. God is finally like, here's my wrath. You have that camp of people that believe that so firmly. And then you have people so firmly, you know, tweeting and saying, this is absolutely not God's wrath. God doesn't do this type of stuff. And they're so confident that that's the case. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, Morgan, I don't think that we have enough to, so, to be a hundred percent sure either way that's my know. opinion uh, yeah again i know that there are people who are like we absolutely have enough but... look at these scriptures <laughs> it is the end times yeah. is what a lot of you know some people say but guys how many times have people said this is the end times these are the end times this is the end i think like absolutely the lord could reveal to us and could reveal to some people like yeah i am in this this is my wrath this is my judgment but I don't know if he has. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm cautious to to go extreme in either direction no. unless the Lord makes it very clear. No matter what anyone thinks, how you live your life right now is what is important. Yeah. Are you bringing glory to God right now? Are you being a light or do you just come off like a psychopath? <laughs> like, no matter what, 
if this is God's judgment, there is a right way then to handle ourselves. And if this is not God's judgment, if this is the enemy, there is a way to handle ourselves. But it should always glorify God. Morgan, just just briefly, where are you at with it just personally? Do you feel like it's a larger portion of this is God's judgment kind of allowing this to happen? Or would you glean more on the side of, uh, you know, we, we have our pastor who talks about the Lord is wanting to pour out his goodness on America. And so the enemy is trying to kind of push back on that and take a stand against it. But then the Lord ultimately is going to pour out his goodness. That's what our pastor sees this as. What do you think? I think that, you know, the Lord does have a plan for his people and the enemy knows it. And this is, again, just my personal opinion. Again, I'm not like 100% solid in this. I am open, whatever. But the enemy knows what the Lord is about to do. And he is doing everything that he can to make people lose their faith. To make people weak. To make mm. people doubt. To make people step away. To make people hurt. Because when someone goes through pain, I know this for me. When I go through a hard time, one of the first things that I struggle with is, God, where are you? Yeah. Why aren't you coming through? Why aren't you helping? And you know, if I was not stronger in my faith, I could very easily see myself being like, you know what? Either God just doesn't care or he's not real. And I would step away. And we read that in uh, our brief devotions this morning. It's true. Reading in Matthew, Jesus talks about the seed that was scattered on the different kinds of soil. And at one point he says, The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word of the Lord and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Yeah. That's Matthew 13, 20 and 21. That's a perfect example of this because yeah. I, I do think that specifically in America is a big issue. We have a lot of people that have tasted the word. They're familiar with Jesus and God. So they're kind of like, yeah, that sounds good, but they don't have roots that go deep. It's very shallow faith. And as soon as persecution comes, as soon as a virus like this sweeps through, oh my goodness, uh, I'm going to just revert back to the ways of the world. I'm going to live in fear. Yeah. And so I think that this is a lot of the enemy, but I think that God is not <laughs> scared. God knew that the enemy was going to try this. And in a way, I think that the Lord is sifting out the, the this is again in Matthew, like he's sifting out the weeds, the, the, the ones who their faith is not real or their faith is not um, fully built on the solid foundation of the Lord. It's built more on these little experiences and moments that they've had, but then they didn't go and back and like fill themselves up and like do the work that they needed to do to build that solid foundational relationship with the Lord. And God's just kind of like allowing the enemy to sift out those types of people. And that's a little bit scary, but <laughs> also it's not because the Lord has a plan and if you're firm in the Lord, you shouldn't be scared. <laughs> if you ain't, get to read in the Word. But I'm not saying that to scare you guys. I'm just sh sharing, like, just with what I kind of think is going on. But again, like... There's a lot of crazy stuff in the book of Revelations. There's some serious wrath that does get poured out. So, I yeah, mean, that's yeah. where we're at. That's where we're at with it. If you're not solid with the Lord, whether this is His judgment or not, if you're feeling a little bit shaky in your walk with the Lord, now is a perfect time. You are locked up in your house to get to know him deeper, to, to make sure that your relationship with the Lord is not built on other people around you who have helped lift you up, who have helped do this. Like, make sure you and God. Yeah, because that's what it's going to be on Judgment Day. You're going to be, you know, face to face with God and it's going to, it's going to be son, daughter, did I know you? Did I know you? Guys, comment below and let us know what you thought about our thoughts on this virus, this pandemic. Do you guys agree with what we think about with the Lord moving and whatnot? Or yeah, do we, you have a different perspective? Uh, we're open. We'd, we'd love to hear y'all's perspectives. Also, let us know just how this has affected you. Maybe the way that the media is treating it. Politics, world news. Like, there's so much stuff 
that's going on and we'd love to hear any perspectives you guys have give this video a thumbs up if you made it all the way through the video Woo! <laughs> yeah guys we enjoyed hanging out with you and just talking have a wonderful rest of your day god bless you guys stay strong get in the word we love you have hope and be free <laughs> what's up guys how you doing i'm paul <laughs> what's up guys how you doing i'm paul i'm morgan this is <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. all right here we go